The White Sharks of Wall Street. Thomas Mellon Evans and the Original Corporate Raiders by Diana B. Henricks. <clears throat> I'm learning so much more about Wall Street. I just keep getting, seem to be getting sent to very informative history. In fact, I'll tell you a little bit about it here on the folder, on the flap. It almost seems that Thomas Mellon Evans was a man so far ahead of his contemporaries that he had moved into the shadows before the full force of his business style had dawned on the rest of corporate America. At every step in his career, he was barging in where few would follow at first, but follow they did at last. From the prologue. The first in-depth portrait of the life and times of the trailblazing financier Thomas Mellon Evans, the man who pursued wealth and power in the 1950s with a brash ruthfulness that forever changed the face of corporate America. My, he almost sounds like uh, the mad scientist who created Frankenstein, doesn't he? Long before him, Michael Milken was using junk bonds to finance corporate takeovers. Thomas Mellon Evans used debt, cash, and the tax code to obtain control of more than 80 American companies. Long before investors began to lobby for shareholder rights, Evans was demanding that public companies be run only for their shareholders, not for their employees, their executives, or their surrounding communities. To some, Evans' merciless style presaged much that is wrong with corporate life today. To others, he intuitively knew what was needed to keep America competitive in the wake of a global war. In the White Sharks of Wall Street, New York Times investigative reporter Diana Henricks provides the first biography of this pivotal figure in American business history. She also portrays the other pioneering corporate raiders of the post-war period, such as Robert Young and Lewis Wolfson, and shows how these men learn from one another and advance one another's takeover tactics. She relates in dramatic detail a number of important early takeover fights, Wolf Wolfson's challenge to Montgomery Ward, Young's move on the New York Central Railroad, the fight for Fallen's B. Steel, and shows how they foreshadowed the desperate battle waged by Tom Evans' son, Ned Evans, to keep the British raider Robert Maxwell away from his Macmillan publishing empire during the 1980s. Henricks also reaches beyond the business arena to tally the tra tragic personal cost of Evans's pursuit of success and to show how the family dynasty shattered when his sons were driven by his own stubbornness and pride to become his rivals. In the end, the battling patriarch faced his youngest son in a poignant battle for control at the Crane Company, the once famous Chicago Plumbing and Valve Company that Tom Evans had himself seized in a brilliant takeover coup 25 years earlier. The White Sharks of Wall Street is a fascinating portrait of an extraordinary man whose career blazed across the sky and then sank into obscurity, but not before he had provided the template for how American business would operate for the next four decades. Diana B. Henricks, a New York Times reporter, is one of the most respected financial journalists in the business and is the author of Fidelity's World and the Machinery of Greed. She lives in Hoboken, New Jersey. And I give her a thumbs up and kudos because I honor whistleblowers and this is a good way to do it. One of the things that, uh, that caught my attention and you might like to hear before you get to read the whole thing one could argue whether Tom Evans was in fact the first corporate raider of the post-war era or just one of the small band of pioneers who rushed on stage 
together as the great bull market of the 50s got rolling. But arguments about who went first, the most possible cases can be made for Robert R. Young and Charles Green, miss the heart of what made Evans a lodestone figure in the evolution of American business. He was a bridge of history, a man whose style, shaped by the business elite of his childhood, deeply frightened and angered most of his own contemporaries, but appealed powerfully to the sons and grandsons of his generation. And that applies to one of the scriptures that says, A father's sins follow his sons, doesn't it? Um, he was a bridge of history, a man whose style shaped by the business elite of his childhood, deeply frightened and angered most of his own contemporaries, but appealed powerfully to the sons and grandsons of his generation. While most of his fellow mavericks focused on takeovers and had little interest in management, Evans went beyond his corporate raids, sometimes along rough and shadowy pathways to reshape the way his companies did business with their workers, their vendors, their shareholders, their communities, even their senior executives. He called himself a corporate rejuvenator, but he could almost be called the man who invented downsizing, one of the earliest promoters of the lean and mean business models. Back when most chief executives longed to appear statesmanlike, he relished his image of ruthlessness. When others sought to build up huge salaries and luxurious corporate empires, he often worked without a salary and pressed only toward the bottom line. And at a time when scattered shareholders and passive institutional investors left most chief executives free of any serious concern about rewarding shareholders, Tom Evans seemed to care about only one thing, pushing up the value of his stockholders' investments. He waged corporate warfare with a brilliance and zest that few had yet mustered and built a con conglomerate in the late 40s before the media had even coined the term. Strangely enough, in these books I've been reading about Wall Street, there are a lot of wolf names of people in there and they are really the wolves at Americans' doors, don't you think? And one Last thing <clears throat> I seen about him that really caught my attention when they were talking about um, Evans, friends described him as pleasant and even charming with seemingly boundless energy and a wide range of interests. But his best friends can see that this chatty acquaintance became a very different person in business deals, the journal writer continued. An associate who describes Mr. Evans as quite shy and proper on the personal side says that on the business side, he's extremely bellicose, rough, hard driving, a tough guy. A confrontation with him can be a nerve shattering experience for a subordinate, says one former Porter executive. He'd call somebody a dumb bastard or an ignorant son of a bitch, and the guy had no choice but to put up with it until he could find another job. Gee, that reminds me of some of these uh, troll commenters on YouTube. Does it you? Hope you have a great night and things cool off for you as well as I hope it does for me. Have a great one. Later.